Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Um, last night I was feeling really ranty and I wrote a basically four page entry in my journal and I figured that I should read it for you guys. Um, it's somewhat scripted, um, well it's definitely scripted, but it's also very much just subconscious, it's unedited, and I just felt like I should read it because I felt very passionate about what I was writing at the time. and. Yeah, and I think there's some good stuff in there. Um, possibly some things where I like over that I overemphasized or some misstatements, but that's what happens when it's uh, entirely from the subconscious. So here we go. Our culture has an extreme lack of meaning. Everyone knows it. Everyone acts short range with no real integrated path forward and no real purpose to anything they do. There are no principles and nothing long term. It's really easy to ignore though. Everything is catered towards distraction in the short term. It all prevents us from finding meaning and numbs our minds. We numb ourselves to pass the time, but what comes when we pass all the time? Death. Everything seems like it's leading up to death. Everything that we do seems like it's leading up to that. But how is that any different from what we're currently doing? Where do I even start? Everything popular seems super short term, empty, and just a distraction from life and long term values. Porn. TV shows, short online videos like TikTok, YouTube, all those sort of um, like videos that are super, su very superficial and just short, distracting, not really any long term values within them, not any like learning that comes from it. Uh, promiscuity, weed, alcohol, partying, video games, and even sports to an extent. Um, I like sports, there's, but there's an extent to which it definitely is short term. But all, all of this stuff numbs and distracts us, um, and it all essentially kills us very slowly. Um, so let's, I guess let's start with porn and promiscuity to an extent. Um, I'll, go, I'll start with porn and probably go into promiscuity. I think that's where the journal entry goes. Um, the porn numbs our dopamine receptors. This is one like actual physical consequence of, of porn. Um, and it gives us the short-term pleasure without purpose or anything deeper, and it wastes our time. Um, also, I'm not for banning porn. Let's just get that out of the out of the way. If you know my actual um, political beliefs, this has nothing to do with political beliefs. This is more of an ethical thing. So nothing that I say in this video is something that I want to ban. It's just things that I see as having very damaging effects on people um, it, because it basically takes away meaning from life. This is something that I find very important, like this idea that in the culture right now, there's not a lot of people with meaning. This is this is off script, by the way. There's not a lot of people with meaning, um, and that's something that I want to help find, help people provide. That's a purpose of this channel, and I think a lot of people on YouTube become popular because they find ways to give people meaning. I think the Groypers do that to an extent, um, with a lot of their more religious things. Jordan Peterson does it to an extent, um, and yeah, those are two people that are big that I think do that. Um, and uh, basically, almost everybody provide tries to provide meaning in some sort of way. <laughs> So yeah, let's uh, let's keep going with the whole porn thing. Um, yeah, porn numbs our dopamine receptors. It gives us this short-term pleasure without purpose or anything deeper, and it wastes our time. We get to pick exactly what we want to see with no effort. There's no pride in that. How do you think this affects self-esteem? That's the primary source of sexual pleasure. Um, well, porn is the primary source of sexual pleasure for most of us. Um, now, of course, some people like go out and do other things with other women, and oft often promiscuous, which is bad too, as I'll probably get into. But a lot of, for a lot of people, porn is this primary source of sexual pleasure. This is where they get the majority of their orgasms from, and this is very damaging because um, it's extremely empty, and it makes uh, sex into something that is a materialistic indulgence. It's, in in other words, it cuts off cuts out all material uh, cu cuts out all spiritual value from the act. This is not the religious uses of spiritual, by the way. Um, this is more referring to the mental values, which um, objectivists view as spiritual value or call spiritual values because of like its connection with your subconscious, which is essentially what objectivists view as like the spirit, quote unquote. Um, so like subconscious values of like pride and um, or that's not a value. That's more of a virtue, but. Um, but things like pride, achievement, um, these all these sort of things, um, and seeing virtues in another person, and actually valuing the other person with their personality and as a person and what they do with their lives. Um, it cuts out all of that spiritual value from the act of sex. And um, this basically removes the pride that makes the act as pleasurable as it is. And if you don't understand what I mean by 
like removing um, by like the pride that can come from like sexual acts and um, physical acts, I guess, because I'm technically I'm a virgin and but I've had experience with like physical acts with women. I've like I I know the difference between like something that's extremely empty and without pride and something that is somewhat meaningful. Um, so yeah, this like this uh, this cutting out of the spiritual value of sex. Um, removes all the pride that makes the act as pleasurable as it is. And if you don't understand what I'm referring to by that, I'm afraid you are hopeless in this regard. If you don't understand the spiritual values that can come from sex, you are already f so far gone down the materialistic route that you will probably never experience real sexual pleasure in your life. Um, and that feels... That's something that is really sad to think. Um, but you can change. Human beings have the ability to shape their own soul, shape their own subconscious, and I mean that's a part of what I'm doing this this reading for, and this I guess this channel for as well. Um, but you gain no actual connection from this experience. It literally just wastes your time. This same thing applies to staring at women who are strangers. This is something that people do a lot. They're like, oh, let's go and let's go to a volleyball game and stare at women's asses all day because oh yes, this is something that'll be so fun, so nice to do. It's like, oh my god, this is, what a waste of time. Because you gain nothing from it. It's entirely empty. Unless your goal is to blue ball yourself fantasizing about an attractive ass that you will never touch on an attractive woman whose pussy you will never be inside. What a waste of your fucking time. <laughs> you will never experience love if you take pleasure in staring and desiring from, a, from afar like a beta male. Plus, there's so much more to wanting a woman than her being attractive. There's no point in wasting your time with a hot girl who can't think and holds no real spiritual, once again, not religious, value for you. It's so short-term because all you can do with her is fuck her and feel the loss of pride that comes with having sex with someone who means absolutely nothing to you. I promise, it's a waste of time. And it can only lower your view of one of the greatest pleasures available, available to man, which is sex. Hot sluts are not worth your, worth your time or your pride. Don't waste your time pursuing attractive women who don't share any values with you. Um, this covers promiscuity, too. This is basically two topics in one rant, which I kind of said earlier on. Um, that efficiency, though. Hell yeah. Um, now on to another topic. Some people waste their time constantly watching funny videos online or TV shows on Netflix. Most shows or videos do nothing to stimulate the people intellectually and simply provide the superficial leisure to just pass the time, which I fucking hate the phrase pass the time because what are you what are you passing the time for? You're just waiting till death. You're just stimulating your mind, distracting yourself, stopping yourself from thinking for uh, for time in your life. This time is limited. You're going you're only passing the time towards death. Um but yeah, let's keep going. Once again, this is a short-term indulgence that consumes people's lives while providing no long-term growth or values. It's such a shame that people constantly indulge in things like this. It pulls them out of reality, out of the reality of life, and distracts them from the real world. It doesn't provide any meaning either. It only distracts people from confronting the question of what they are doing with their lives. You will never find purpose this way you're, if you're constantly distracting yourself from the question of purpose. Um, this applies to just about every distraction I talk about uh, t today. Um, weed, alcohol, and partying are part of another category. These quite literally numb your mind. Um, they help you escape from the short-term high, or es escape into the short-term high that distracts you from reality and purpose. When indulged in massive quantities and or often, they are a sign of a mind trying to escape the responsibility of living long-term. They also numb your mind over time and prevent you from thinking straight. Um, these are really, really toxic. To take in these sort of substances into your mind is extremely damaging, and it really just takes away from any meaning in your life. It's all just short-term, and it takes away from any long-term goal, any long-term happiness that you could um, try to achieve. Um, video games are similar to TV shows and short videos. They pull you out of reality. Um, they pull you out of reality to... What did what, I wrote? I Wait, hold up. Sorry, this I I had some I I this is this is what happens when I don't uh, check my thing afterward. Um, oh, sorry, I I I wasn't reading the word fake right. Okay, they pull you out of reality to give you fake, meaningless goals with no connection to your life or reality. They are so addicting and such a clear waste of time. They're addicting because they can provide some people with a sense of long-term meaning, since there's goals, achievements, all these sort of things in video games. 
but success is ultimately empty because it has no connection with life. Um, I know from my experience, every time I play a video game, um, I will get very into it, very into trying to achieve a certain goal. And then once I achieve it, it feels really empty. I feel like I just wasted my time because I didn't actually gain anything in the real world. Um, um, there's also, but there are good aspects of video games too. There's social aspects to it and forming connections with other people is definitely a long-term thing and a very positive thing that can give you purpose. So if, to the extent that people use video games for that, then it's an okay thing. <laughs> Finally, paying attention to sports is so pointless as well. It has no real impact on your life like all these previous things I mentioned. However, there's some positives to it if it's a social experience. And it's a lot of fun to spend time watching sports with friends and family. And, but the social interaction is what's the essential in this case, not a focusing on sports. Um, there can be an extent to which you want to pay attention to what's going on in sports so you can talk about it with your friends. It can be a good topic of discussion, but it's extremely short term and can be extremely distracting, distracting when indulged in for its own sake. Um, now, none of these things are as fulfilling as things that provide me with long term purpose. Um, these things for me include doing math and working on some homework. Like the, these are things that a lot of people don't view as very uh, fulfilling. But for me, like working on homework, doing math, that sort of stuff, which is basically like pursuing my career. When you keep it in that context, when you keep it in this long term context, it becomes extremely purposeful. And it's not this big distraction like a lot of people make it out to be um, working out as well. Um, it's imp like improving my body. It's basically making myself feel more comfortable in the world, making myself stronger, um, and yeah, those those sort of things. And it's v like very, very long-term beneficial. It feels very purposeful. Um, reading and writing is another thing. Um, basically improving my mind, helping myself think clear, helping myself think about things, yeah, helping myself think about things more clearly, um, trying to improve my subconscious premises, which improves my emotional state, makes it more aligned with my rational faculty. And finally, creating YouTube videos, which once again, improves my mind because a big reason I made this channel is for speaking clarity. Um, and also developing my channel, which is somewhat of a purposeful career type thing too at this point, because I'm starting to make a little bit of money from it. And my channel starting to grow quite a bit. Um, all of these things are long term goals that give me purpose. However, a lot of people struggle to view long-term things as fulfilling because they've been conditioned to constantly pursue the short term. These long-term goals, they feel like too much work for a lot of people. So a lot of a lot of people refuse to indulge in them or feel like they're just like things that they have to do. Um, like education, for example, they go to school because it's like, oh, I have to do this to go get a job in the future. And this isn't actually something I want to do. Or, oh my God, I have to go work on homework again. No, this is... This is your purpose in life. This is what should be long-term fulfilling for you. If you keep it in that context, it's a lot easier to realize how positive those things are. Working is going to be a large part of your life, and it should be what gives you purpose because you're doing something in reality. You're creating something. You're using your mind to lead to your own survival and produce values. This is something that is very beneficial, very purpose-filled. Um, yeah, but all, these, all this, this conditioning to pursue the short term comes at the cost of meaning. People are really struggling to give their lives a long-term purpose. This is something that should be obvious to anyone who looks at the world right now. It's very difficult to find people who are living with a long-term purpose. Um, and if you live short-term, like I've described in this in this essay slash video now, um, this midlife crisis is going to hit you hard. Uh, people talk about midlife crises all the time where they feel like their life has no meaning. Um, and it just is extremely painful. That The midlife crisis is going to hit you hard when you constantly indulge in short-term things and have no real long-term goals because you can't distract yourself forever. You have this implicit desire to achieve, to achieve happiness, um, to achieve long-term goals. Um, and you can't hide from that forever. This is, this is actually an issue with Buddhism. It tries to push away all of your desires. You can't do that. You're not living a real life if you do that. You're essentially just dying before you've ever gotten a chance to live because death is death is characterized by a lack of pursuit of values that's when you're not pursuing anything um because you're dead um that's that's one thing that characterizes death and when you basically cut out all values from your life um like buddhism does and like what a lot of people do by simply pursuing short-term um short-term time passers which is such a fucking negative thing um but yeah, this all these these things are essentially the same as death because you're not pursuing anything long term. 
um, you're just numbing your mind and distracting yourself and stopping yourself from thinking. The time when you're not going to think is death. If you don't want to die, don't do it now. Save it for later, please. Um, so yeah, what is the what is the um, what is the source of all this uh, short-term thinking? A lot of people blame it on the loss of religion, which causes people to um, feel that their life has no long-term purpose. This is true to an extent. Um, religion was a misintegration of the past. It was a false way of integrating reality, integrating their life around some purpose, which is a good thing because it's good to have something that your life is integrated around. Um, however, if you have a wrong answer, um, well, you have three answers, basically. A no answer, which is what a lot of people do by not pursuing meaning at all. A wrong answer, which is religion. And a right answer, which I view to be objectivism, which is basically it gives you all these positives um, related to meaning without the mysticism of a religion, without the view of man as a lesser being that comes with religion. Um, or without the view of man as a weak being that cannot achieve that comes with religion. Without the constant waiting for death that comes with, re with religion. Um because that's that's part of religion as well just this whole like you're never going to going to actually achieve true meaning in life so you have to wait to de till death to achieve that well when you're dead you're dead there's like there's <laughs> there's nothing after that um so that's a terrible way of looking at life but it does there are good aspects because it does provide people meaning it does make people feel like their life has a long-term purpose and it helps people to not constantly focus on distracting them themselves and focus more on their long-term purpose and more on like spiritual value values and sex and things like that um which i view to be important um they they have some really mystical interpretation of the spirit as well which objectivism doesn't have um objectivism more views the spirit as the subconscious um but yeah that's the, there's some good aspects of religion um so this whole this whole feeling that people don't have long-term purpose it needs to be challenged, and the, the answer is not by bringing back religion, but by replacing with reason and philosophy, which is objectivism. You need to play, replace it with human reason as the um, primary faculty of knowledge and an, and an ethics of selfishness, of long-term achievement, which is what essentially what selfishness is. Um, objectivism, um, Rucka said, is actually similar to, like, should be called, like, the self-help philosophy. It should be... Um, packaged in that way because that's essentially what it does it helps you find long-term purpose in life um not by giving you some intrinsic purpose of god that's non-existent but by um and not by saying that there's no such thing as purpose so you need to subjectively choose your own like existentialism objectivism says that there is um an objective potential for happiness in life um this is this isn't something directly directly out of ayn rand but this is something that i've kind of interpreted from it um there's a sort of objective potential for happiness in life that comes that comes with living like this is you live because you want because there's a potential for happiness in life that's why you continue living um charles too kind of explained it as like um you're essentially like this entity who's kind of or this life that's kind of signed a contract like you if you um sustain this life you you will be rewarded by happiness so you're doing it because of happiness but what you're doing is sustaining your life self-preservation um, doing things that are in the interest of your own life. Um, so yeah, that's essentially, so that's basically what objectivism, that's how objectivism gives you meaning by giving you these objective requirements for life, which is what ethics is about and saying that and, sh and showing how those are also objective requirements for happiness and how living essentially leads to your happiness and purpose in life. Um, so yeah, People, so let's continue with the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, what I was talking about. So people need to be encouraged to think and put their lives in a broader context without mis the mysticism of religion. This is because ultimately I want to be happy and I want everyone else to be happy as well. I want to see more happy people in the world. Um, just because, because, and this is because I'm selfish. I want to have a more happy society. I want to have more happiness in the world. Um, because that, I mean, that's just good to see. More people pursuing their career, more people producing, more people being happy is very beneficial for my life as well because I can trade with these people. I can gain spiritual values from these long-term thinkers. Um, so yeah, I think that is all I had to say for today. I basically finished that that sort of essay that I wrote. Um, it's not really an essay because it wasn't edited in any sense, but it was something, it was basically like me ranting in my journal last night, uh, which was... It was an experience it was a good time um 
I often have moments where I will just go and rant in my journal and I'll probably start reading those more often because I think there's some good things that I have to say that can come with me reading these journal entries and it can be very beneficial for um, for you as well I think because um, I think that there's some good points in there that a lot of people can take from and find meaning from um, and I really that's one goal of this channel is to also help people find meaning um, that's more of like a developed goal over time because my original goal was simply to help myself uh, find more mental clarity but I think another goal should be to help people discover objectivism and, and in that way disc find more meaning for their lives um, I mean there's also goals of like promoting capitalism promoting individualism and freedom but I think my main two my main two goals are improving my own mental clarity and speaking clarity and helping people for find meaning through objectivism um, so yeah I think those should be my main focuses of this channel uh, so yeah, I think that's all I have to say for today. Uh, so thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Peace.